Hey, Anthony, uh, I watched the the film last night, man. It was uh, it was ex everything I wanted from, you know, in a uh, a found footage film. Uh, so first off, I, I kind of want to know what films inspired you or like going into this production. And, uh, you know, was was uh, the Frogman, was he always was he always the focus? Did you always was he like the, the cryptid you kind of grew up loving type of question, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't actually know about Frogman until maybe 2018. Um, I've always loved cryptids, monsters, um, you know, Bigfoot, Mothman, all that good stuff. Never heard of Frogman. And I think most, most people haven't, unfortunately. Um, and so when he came to my attention, I was like, this is just so bizarre. I mean, all the other, you know, most of the other cryptids are like semi believable, or you could at least understand how someone could maybe think they saw something like that, you know, like, you know, uh, saw something else that, you know, maybe looked like a giant hairy man in the woods. Um, but, but Frogman is so hilarious to me because multiple people have claimed to have seen a four foot bipedal frog amphibian lizard like creature with a wand in the woods. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just so different and there's, there's nothing else like it. Um, and as far as influences, I mean, of course, Blair, Witch was, a, is a big one. I mean, that was, that was a movie I kept coming back to while writing it, while filming to kind of like go back to like source or center of like what a found footage movie is supposed to be. Um, and then the two other big influences were Willow Creek. Um, which is Bobcat's great found footage movie about Bigfoot um, and digging up the marrow that, that Adam Green did. Uh, Cause I think he, he did such a great job of, of shooting effects in that one, which is, it's tough to do in found footage. And honestly, you don't see it a whole lot in found footage. It's, it's the less is more thing and, you know, keeping things in the shadows. And he was like, no, we're going to make some crazy monsters and you're going to get a good look at them, you know? So, Yeah. Yeah, it's it's you know I was hoping you'd mention at least one of those films because watching the film last night, I mean, it definitely has similar pacing with Willow Creek. Um, you know, the nods to Blair Witch are obviously there, which I I really appreciated. I I loved. Yeah, I loved that. You know, this is almost like a found footage film for you know people that grew up in that era of like Blair Witch, and. Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. All of those answers are interesting to me because, yeah, Frogman does not get the credit he deserves. And I thought it was really interesting when this popped on my, you know, over my desk. I was like, wow, finally someone is taking a stab at the Loveland legend. And uh, yeah, kudos to you, man. That's really cool. Thank you. Uh, the use of, you know, practical effects and, you know, VHS filming gives, gave this film a unique aesthetic and was was uh what motivated you to kind of go that route and make that decision and use those specific techniques i i think it added to it for, from my perspective but was was that kind of the goal for for you are you talking about like the practical like makeup of like creature effects that stuff yeah the creature effects as well as like kind of um using the combination of like the the uh the high eight recording you know, as well as like the YouTube videos, like it just seemed like there was a diff couple different mediums as far as the actual video goes, which I thought was kind of cool. And then, sure. yeah, the, the, the practical effects too. Yeah. That, um, you know, like you said, I grew up with Blair Witch. This is like totally a love letter to like that era of found footage for me. Um, I'm a huge found footage fan. I love the new stuff. I love the big budget Cloverfield as above, so below stuff. Um, I love the newer indie stuff that's being shot on, you know, 8K phone cameras and like, you know, accessible like consumer rate cameras. Um, I love it all, but I really wanted to shoot on high eight. Like to me, like that's found footage. Like I love that analog feel, that lo-fi aesthetic. Um, and of course, when you're making kind of a run and gun found footage movie, it'd be pretty difficult to make a period piece. <laughs> I mean, even just 
the opening uh you know scene that's in 99 was such a nightmare of like avoiding cars and you know like you, you don't realize how far from 99 we are until like you you try to like look through the world at that lens and you're like oh man there there wasn't any of this stuff cars didn't look like this um so i wanted to find a way to to justify shooting on a camera like that but still keeping it present day because of course we couldn't make a found or a, a period piece um and so like that's kind of where the iphone footage comes in and there's a little bit of like like high quality camera at amy's party early on in the movie um just to like establish like we're not you know oblivious to the fact that there are nice cameras and this takes place in like you know 2022 or whatever like we're just gonna give the movie an emotional you know, reason to, to trans transfer to high eight eventually. Um, so yeah, that really was just coming from like wanting that aesthetic again, because not a whole lot of found, found footage movies have that anymore. They're, they're a little, uh, too polished for my, my taste. Um, and then the practical effects, I mean, from a selfish standpoint, I just want to be on set with a monster, <laughs> you know, or, or, or a blood cannon or, or, you know, some slime. Um, so I didn't want to do everything CG. Um, and one of my best friends, Ryan Shadley, he's an incredible VF or a, a SFX artist. Um, and him and Becky Ingram created the suit and, and all the, all the gags that you see. Um, and that was, that was a lot of fun to figure out, you know, because like found footage, I mean, when you're shooting like a practical effect gag, you're trying to like find your angle, you know, it usually only looks good from, you know, a specific point. Someone's got to hide with a tube or, you know, whatever you see a seam. Um, so that was, that was an interesting challenge with found footage because your camera's just all over the place and you do, you know, s see things from, from various, like, like 360. One of the things I also wanted to mention is that in this in this film in particular like because i wanted to ask you about the challenges but what i liked about it and i think one of the things that shine is that in every scene like you mentioned the party scene or like the the, the opening sequence and things like that there's always a reason for a camera to be there and that always bothers me as a viewer like when we're watching something that there's no camera necessary so you know, I was going to ask about challenges, but I mean, you kind of knocked you knocked that question out of the park. But was there ever any challenges as far as like scripting when like, how do I put a camera in this particular place or did it all kind of come naturally to you? There there definitely was challenges. That was something we were really um, aware of. And it, it's really it was a really simple uh, solve as to why the camera keeps rolling, which is just that Dallas is obsessed. He is obsessed with documenting the entire thing and like getting all the evidence imaginable that Frogman exists. And there's like some conspiracy in this town. And, you know, most found footage movies, the characters get to a point where like, they've had enough. Like, oh, this isn't fun anymore. You know, like not, now we're just like genuinely scared for our lives. And that's the point where it usually falls apart. And it's like, well, why are you still filming then? Put it, put the camera down and deal with what you're in. And in this situation, we kind of have the best of both worlds because there's two characters that are like, why are we still filming? Can we get the fuck out of here? And then our main character, our anchor is like, you know, no, like this is what we're here to do. We're going to keep shooting the whole time. Um, but we did, you know, there's a couple longer scenes in the movie that really do kind of like linger on the drama a little bit, uh, which we tried to, uh, motivate as best we could that, you know, our, our cameraman was trying to get some tea, you know, for the, for, yeah. for the movie. Um, but there used to be more of that. There used to, there, there was a couple, at least two or three more scenes where the camera just kind of gets set down, um, you know, very conveniently and just rolls on some juicy, drama and uh it it felt like to do it more than we did which is i think there's like three in the movie right now two or three it was like that's that's about it any more than that and like we're kind of like pressing our luck of believability yeah yeah i i, I thought that the balance was 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 there and i really enjoyed it uh i was never 
like there's moments in Willow Creek where I got a little bored, like, but I still love that film. And with this, I could tell that you went back and like fine tooth comb, you know, like I need to know, like, I don't know, the, po the polish was there. I know you said you don't really like your film's polish, but yeah, I could tell that, that you, this is a passion project for you. And uh, yeah, so speaking of which, you know, how did you balance, you know, ma maintaining that eerie nature of the legend, you know, while incorporating, because um, this is like a horror comedy, you know, at, at its core, you know, how did you balance the eerie nature as well as the horror comedy? Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I always, we kind of always approach this from, from the aspect of like, if we're making a movie about Frogman, it's just inherently going to be funny, yeah. like from the absurdity of the concept. Um, so let's try and take it seriously, I guess. Um, I, I mean, of course, like any character in this world that's experiencing what they experience in this movie, like it would not be funny. There's nothing funny about, you know, the danger they're in. Right. So like, th like that was kind of just naturally the balance is like, well, let's take this seriously as possible. Um, but like what we're trying to take seriously is absurd. So there will be comedy there. And then, you know, every, like before, before we like get into the horror realm and it's just kind of like these three wandering around town, you know, like kind of exploring, just like, like setting up the characters and, and the town and all that and the legend, um, they're, their chemistry was just so damn good. Like they are, the three of them are just naturally funny yeah. um, and played off each other so well. So like that was, I mean, we definitely had like some scripted moments that that made it in that do do hit, that do land, like the Frogman fucks thing. Um, but uh, I mean, the majority of it's just them. It's just them riffing and and uh, just improving off each other. That's crazy to hear because it, it like you can tell they're having fun but um i mean it's almost like too good like it seems as if i mean but that's that says a lot about them you know like that's that's really cool and you know speaking of of uh dallas you know did you ever consider you know putting yourself in the film and how much of dallas kyle's character and experiences were inspired by you, you know, and your real life challenges in the filmmaking industry. Well, if you see Frogman and you know that I had just turned 30 when we wrote it, um, that's probably all you got to know. <laughs> all you got to know. <laughs> I've been at this for over 10 years. I hadn't made a feature yet until Frogman. Um, so I was very much not quite as as rock bottom as Dallas is, but definitely feeling as rock bottom as Dallas is, you know, turning 30 and just being like, what am I doing? I went to film school and I like, you know, I make a short every other year, but like this still isn't a career. I still am struggling like financially, like, like what am I really doing? Um, so there is a lot of me in Dallas for sure. <laughs> and I think a lot of, um, Nate, um, our actor that plays Dallas, and a lot of John, my co-writer, um, all three of us um, have known each other for, for well over a decade and done a ton of um, projects together, shorts and features, um, you know, working on other people's features and stuff like that. Um, but this is what we want to be doing. This is what we've always wanted to be doing is just making movies together and making our own movies, telling our own stories and like hopefully making, you know, a living off of that. Um, so he really is a culmination of the three of us. And and like I said, I've known Nate for over a decade. He's usually my leading man, yeah. um, or at least in in whatever I do in some respect. Um, and we really wrote it for him. Um, we wrote it for all three of them, uh, actually. So so there was never never any intention of me making it into the movie. I don't I don't fare well in front of the camera, unfortunately. <laughs> and for Scotty. Um, we, another thing we really wanted to focus on was making the character behind the camera, a true character. You know, there, I feel like so often, even in great found footage movies that I love, you kind of forget who's behind the camera. You forget the face. You feel like, like, who is that again? Who's operating? Um, and so it was like really important to try and give you a good amount of Scotty in front of the camera. So you know who he is, you connect with him and keeping him 
like actively involved even when he is behind the camera too so you always feel him there and now that, that's something that i couldn't uh perform for sure <laughs> yeah definitely uh strong storytelling uh pieces there which you know i really appreciate it as the story went on and you know for those that this is their introduction to you and if if they love this where should they go where else should they go you know how how can they find you and uh, what else would you suggest they they seek out? Mm -hmm. um, I'm most active on on Instagram, cousins underscore Anthony. Um, there's also the Frogman Instagram, Frogman movie. Um, yeah, and if you want to see more stuff I've done, um, quite a few shorts are on YouTube um, and Vimeo. If you just like look up my name, they'll probably pop up. And uh, Scare Package 1 and 2, I did a segment in, in both of those respectfully, and those are on um shutter right now yeah awesome man well um i guess to wrap up you know i want to i want to ask one more thing about frogman and ultimately it's kind of it's it's more of, it's a selfish question you know like what do you what do you want the audience to get out of out of you know viewing this film you know what where is is this is this anthony cousins you know what tell the people how get them excited about this project man yeah um i mean if you, if you like found footage uh, i think you'll enjoy it um it really came from i you know unfortunately i see a lot of found footage that i it gets over and i think i don't think that person actually likes found footage <laughs> that made that movie i think they they did it because it's you know easy or cheap or whatever um so this really came from a place of love like i love this genre um i wanted to deliver on the promise of frogman and like give you some crazy effects and give you a creature feature you know because as much as i love the found footage that you know keep it in the shadows and don't show you much i was like we gotta let's see him let's see that wand let's see things go crazy um so you know if you like found footage if you like creature features if you like cryptids like we try to do justice to all that. There's a little bit of Lovecraftian, you know, culty lore in there too. Um, definitely a shadow over Innsmouth um, inspiration. Yeah, I don't know. I just personally, I, I try to make movies that I would want to see. And I've seen a lot. <laughs> I watch horror every week, if not every day. Um, so I know what hasn't been done yet. And uh, and that's kind of, that's what I want to try to do. Yeah, and, and Frogman does, does fuck apparently. So- <laughs> Yeah, you got to check this out. And won't like, I, I love the poster as well, and the the cover art, man, that's fantastic. Um, can you, can you talk a little bit about how that came to be before we let you go? Yeah, I um, on on Instagram, I found this artist Easton Hawk, who does a ton of cryptid artwork, but he did um he did a frogman painting um or illustration that's in the movie it's in the opening youtube sequence where they're kind of showing frogman images it's frogman with the wand and i was like oh my god this is gorgeous like at the time like the, like this is the most beautiful rendition of frogman i've ever seen um so i reached out to him told him what we were up to and i was like would you want to do our poster and he was super down um i know from talking with him that he took inspiration from the arachnophobia poster which is a great iconic poster um and yeah he just knocked it out of the park man like i think especially in horror in movies in general but especially horror like your poster is part of your movie's identity you know and it, like whether it represents your movie um uh you know it, l l l if it sells the movie that it really is or whether it's just a badass piece of art that's you know like promoting it like you know you look at even like the the original star wars poster doesn't really look like anything that happens in that movie. Like Luke's shirts like coming off and he's yeah. shooting a laser into the sky. That's a bad, we all know that poster. It's a great poster. Um, so I kind of love that, that tradition of like, you know, that, no matter what your movie is, try to just make an awesome poster for it. And I miss poster art, you know, rather than just like faces slapped on a thing with a, with the title. Yeah. Well, I mean, the VHS sold out um, at lunch meet. So, I mean, the poster is definitely doing doing the job uh, yeah. he, here at Cinedump. We let the doers know how they're doing. And Anthony, you are doing just fine. 
I truly appreciate your time. This is this was a, a ton of fun. I can't wait to watch this with my kids. I think that you know they love cryptids, and I think that you you did the frogman justice. So thank you, man. And take care. Looking forward to the next one as well. Thank you.